I'm designing a helix, in fact a double helix with any rail 6 on Ron's trains and things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more Model Railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure to subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. A little while back, I made a basic tutorial on how to use any rail 6 and showed you the basics of how to begin to design a layout with this great track planning software. In that video, I said, if you'd like to see some more tutorials on some of the more advanced features of AnyRail 6, to be sure and let me know in the comment section. And so many of you did. And I really want to say that I appreciate the fact that you gave me that feedback. Well, I'm planning over the course of the coming months to make a series of videos, each on one of the more advanced features that you can use in any Rail 6 and some of the things that I learn about, some shortcuts and hacks for any Rail 6 as we go. We're going to begin today with a tutorial about how to use the Create Helix function of any Rail 6 to design a helix for your layout if you happen to be doing a double deck layout and you need to get the curves and the grade right on your helix, any rail will help you do that. So we're gonna head right on over to the computer and get started with this tutorial on the helix function of any rail six. Check out our sponsor, Midwest Model Railroad. With some of the best prices and customer service in the business, they're your one-stop model railroad shop. MidwestModelRR.com, link in the description. Here I am inside of AnyRail 6, and uh, this is actually inside of my track plan for my current layout, including the expansion, and I, I've got it zoomed way in because this is where the area we're going to be working today, uh, but I, I want you to recognize this green section right here is the very end of the expansion. Uh, this area right here where you see my cursor moving is where uh, my new helix is going to be. Um, before we get to the helix, I wanted just to correct uh, or, or clarify a couple of things from the first video whenever I gave you a basic tutorial of AnyRail 6. Uh, first of all, uh, I made a comment at the time that I didn't think in N-Scale that Atlas Track was available. And uh, many people corrected me on that. And as I got back and got to looking, I realized, yeah, I was, I was way off base there. The fact of the matter is my issue was uh, I had never e either never updated or never installed that particular track library. But if you look right here in the, in the menus across the top under track libraries, uh, you can, you see all of uh, uh, these uh, different companies that, that have their, their libraries here. And, and here of course is Atlas with code 55, code 65, code 80 track. Uh, it is uh, definitely there and available along with the others. Uh, the reason I didn't have it was I somehow had not updated my software at, in the way that I thought that I had. So uh, if you are having an issue with uh, something that you're not seeing that you think you ought to have, uh, make sure that you update your software, get the latest version. Uh, it's, it's still AnyRail 6, but they have some updates from time to time. Also, some people ask me about adding object libraries where other uh, people have um, added footprints of, of structures and, and various things. And you see here is the object libraries menu. Uh, but to, uh, to update those, uh, we need to go uh, into the uh, uh, user objects uh, right here. Uh, and this is where we can get the user updated uh, libraries. And right here where it says download new items, and this is going to, I'm gonna go ahead and click this because it's gonna take a little bit of time. But I want you to notice right down here in the bottom, uh, what this is showing me, uh, this is three numbers there. Uh, I'm not sure what the first number is, uh, but uh, it, it may be um, uh, manufacturers, I'm not sure. This last number, that in my case is 1757, that's showing me the number of total items that have not been updated since my, since my last update. Um, and... Uh, and then this counter in between would show me the number of, of items as it was going through the process uh, that it had had uploaded. Now, for some reason, this only showed me a couple. I went in here today and, and looked at new items. I didn't actually download them. Uh, so I'm not sure why it didn't do all of those, but that's okay. This will do what we want it to do. 
Uh, cause basically I wanted to show you how to download those. You, whenever you, uh, look at the new items, it's going to show you all the manufacturers, all the scales, it's going to give you a whole list. And if you haven't done this before, or if you haven't done it in a while, it's going to take you a while for that to read. And you're going to have a long list from various scales. And then you can go through and highlight the ones that you want. And what I do is I click on this little header right here where it says scale and that will group them by scale. And then I just go through being an inscaler. I'm only interested in the inscale items. And so I will highlight all the inscale items and I can do that. In this case, there's only one here, but I can highlight the first one, go to the last one, hold the shift key down and click it. That will choose all of the items in between. So I choose all the inscales. I come over here and click OK, and then uh, and then we're ready to go, uh, and it will download those items. I'm going to go ahead and download that one, so so we'll have it. So anyway, I just wanted to show you some people that asked me about how to update those, uh, and that will uh, will help you to, uh, to 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 take care of that. Now the the real topic that I want to talk about today is is how to design a helix uh, in in any rail six. Uh, and in fact, what I'm uh, going to be doing is a, a double helix. So I'm actually going to show you this twice and, and show you kind of how to do a double helix. I don't know if there's a better way to do the double helix than what I'm going to show you. There might be, uh, but this is how I have found to do it. Uh, if we're going to make any helix, the first thing we need is a piece of flex track. So I've got my track library over here on the left. I'm just going to click on a piece of, uh, uh, of regular flex track and, and drag it out here. Now my helix, uh, this is the lower deck. So I'm going to be doing a helix that's up from here. Uh, and it's going to go up a total of 24 inches. And, and in my case, I, I haven't actually set heights on my track at this point. Uh, I'm going to do that and we'll talk about that on a different video. But as of right now, this track is all basically set at zero inches high. There's no elevation. So there's, tw but I, I have 24 inches in elevation difference from the lower deck to the upper deck, railhead to railhead. So I need my helix to go up 24 inches. I also, um, uh, you know, I'm going to talk about my radius in a moment, but I need a helix that, that as it goes up, that spirals counterclockwise. So it's going to turn this way. Uh, I need to know all that first, because the first thing I have to do is I have to take a piece of flex track and I have to make a curve out of it. So you can see I've highlighted this flex track. It's green. And then up here in my menu at the top, um, I'm going to click on this line that says curve flex. And that's going to help me make a curve. And I'm going to give it some information. I want the angle right now to be 90 degrees, a 90 degree curve. And I want my radius, uh, in this case, to be 22.5 inches. That's the actual radius, radius of the outer curve on my helix. Uh, and I'm going to click OK. Now, you see that that gives me a nice piece of curved track. Unfortunately, uh, it's kind of curved the wrong direction. It's not positioned where I need it to be. Now, I could turn this flex track with, with this tool right here. Uh, and drag it back and forth, uh, but it's a little imprecise to, to, to do that. Uh, the easier way to do that is to use the rotate tool. Uh, again, I'm on the track menu and over here to the left is rotate tool. I'm going to click on that and then that's going to allow me to, to, to click and to rotate this in, in whichever direction I want to even degree amounts. And I want to rotate it exactly 90 degrees. Whoops, I ended up with 89. I want exactly 90 degrees. There we go. Okay. And that's got uh, my, my curve, my starting curve, the way I want it. This curve will connect into this leg of this turnout whenever I am, am finished. Uh, or actually, this is a little piece of straight track beyond the turnout, but you, you get the idea. Okay, so I've got this curve, 90 degree curve. It, it is set at the radius that I want my whole helix to be. Uh, at this point, I'm going to take and I'm going to right click on the piece of track and right about in the middle, it's got this uh, item to create a helix. And so I'm going to click that and then we got to fill in some, some information here. Now, my starting point height, uh, which is going to be this piece of track, is, is going to be zero because that's where I've got this, this set. And I want to go up 24 inches, so my end point height is going to be 24 uh, because my uh, my any rail is set to work in inches. Uh, the number of loops, now you see right here where it says the number of loops and then it fills in your slope percentage. If you were going up 24 inches in one loop, you'd have a 17% grade. That's obviously not what we want. 
Uh, I've done some calculations and I, I know that what I need is eight and a half turns. So 8.5. Uh, and uh, when I hit tab, you see now all of a sudden, now my slope is, is going to be a 2% grade. And my rise per turn is going to be 2 and 3 16, 13 16 inches, which is exactly what I want. Now, this is the one thing I need to change. Which way is it going to turn? It's set now to turn clockwise. And if I leave that alone, my helix is going to go this way. But I need the helix to go this way. I need this to be the starting point. So I'm going to change this to counterclockwise. Now, the one thing I, I want to describe before I click OK here is that since I've set this to work counterclockwise off of this curve, this will be my starting point. Uh, eight and a half turns means that that last half turn means that the ending point is going to be up here. I kind of need to remember that because once the helix is drawn, uh, it's a little difficult to see exactly where the beginning and ending points are. Uh, so I need to kind of remember those so I can connect them in. So now I've got all my information. I'm going to click OK. And what I have from this vantage point looks like a circle, but this actually is my helix. It's all drawn out here. And as I just told you, my beginning point is down on the bottom. You can't see it here. What you see is a connection, but the reason you can't see it is because you're looking at the top of the helix. The connecting point is on the very bottom level of the helix. But if I drag it over here to connect it to this uh, piece of rail where I want it, oops, um, we highlight the helix again. I want to drag the whole thing down. Uh, I need to grab the rail and not the not the box. Now look, whenever I drag it over, you're going to notice it turned blue. You see, that's the, the uh, indication it gives you that it's ready to make a connection to that piece of rail. And when, so when I drop it, now it is connected to this piece of rail at the bottom. Uh, now here at the top, it's going to be going out to the, to the upper deck. Uh, and I don't, I don't have the upper deck on here, not ready to draw that, but I want to represent the, a little piece of track there that will help me. So I'm going to click on a, a new piece of track. Uh, this is just a new piece of flex track, and I, I don't want near this much, so I'm going to cut it in, in half approximately. Cut the flex track right here. I'm going to disconnect it, and then I'm going to take this piece, and you see I can connect it into the top. See how it turns blue there? Now that's connected where it exits the, the, the helix. I'm going to leave this piece of track up here to use in a moment. Now, to give you a better sense of what we just drew, we're going to go to the, uh, to the 3D view. So uh, on the menus at the top, I'm going to go to Home, and then uh, over here towards the left, you see 3D view. And when I click on that, um, and just to give it a little background here, I'm going to you tell it to give me a cloudy sky just in case you can kind of see. Now this is the whole layout. And again, I've still got a lot of stuff I need to kind of draw on this. Uh, but I'm going to right click and drag over here to the side. And then I'm going to scroll in because I want you to see that right here is the helix that we just drew. And I can drag it around. We look, look at it in different places and directions. You can see it's connected here at, at the bottom. Uh, it connected to this piece of rail at the top. There's the other little piece of rail that I cut and just left that I'm going to use when we draw the other part of the helix. Uh, but there's a, a representation of, of my helix. It doesn't show the, the, uh, the, the sub road bed or the supporting plywood, but I, I don't really need it to show that. Um, but it, it lets me know what my helix looks like. Now I'm going to go back to my 2D version. So back up here at the top on the far left, 2D view. I'll click on that. And now I want to draw the, the other part of my helix. So I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to get a fresh, full piece of flex track. And I'm going to drag it over here somewhere. And then I'm going to uh, make it a curve. Uh, again, I want it to be a 90 degree curve. Uh, now, but this time I, I need a different radius. Uh, I need to be a smaller radius so that I'm inside of this curve. This was 22 and a half. Uh, this one is going to be a 21 inch radius, so I'm going to put 21 in there and click OK. And uh, again, the same kind of thing. I need to rotate this, so I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, um, like so. And then uh, with that at 90 degrees, I click OK. And then again, I come back on a right click on this curve. Actually, I want to I want to move this first over here a little bit, so it's not overlapping so much. I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a helix. Uh, again, it's going to start at zero. It's going to go up to 24 inches. And it's also going to have 8.5 turns. 
um, which will be a 2.1% grade. It's a little steeper grade because it's on the inside. Uh, it's a it's a little shorter. Therefore, uh, the, the grade per turn is going to be a little steeper. It's still going to rise uh, 2 and 13 16 inches. I need it to go counterclockwise again. And I'm going to click OK. And there's my second helix. Now, again, my starting point on the bottom is going to be down here. My uh, exit point at the top is going to be right here. I'm going to go ahead and take this little piece of flex track that I left a while ago and connect it up here at the top. Uh, and there that connects in. Now, I'm going to drag this, uh, this whole thing over here and I'm going to put it inside of my first helix because that's, you know, that's double helix. That's what I'm, what I'm working with. Now, the one thing that I've had an issue with, and I, I don't know why it is, uh, this uh, the starting point should connect up with this uh, other Y uh, or other leg that comes off of my uh, turnout. For whatever reason, it will not actually auto connect there. Uh, so, you know, for the sake of drawing out a track plan, I, I just need to get it in the right position and, and, and leave it um, because that, that's where it's going to be. Why it won't auto connect, I don't know. Um, but, but that's what it looks like. There I have the, my, my double track helix. And uh, to get a good view of it, we go back to the 3D view. And, and here it is uh, once again. Uh, you can see it get down on the level with it. You can see it from up above. You can see the double tracks. You can see where it comes in down here. Now, now again, the way I've got it placed in there, it shows just a little bit of a gap. Uh, I could I could correct that and get that perfect in here if I wanted to, but uh, I think it's it, it it's set pretty good. Uh, and from here, then I could go ahead and uh, design how this is going to connect out to the to the upper deck. It'll be a little different than what you see here, uh, because in fact, what's going to happen? Let me go back to my two D view. In fact, in reality, and I'll come back and adjust this later. Uh, this is, is, is really going to, uh, to connect together into another, uh, turnout, uh, right in, in this area here. Uh, and then it will take a single track that will go on out through the wall and curve onto the upper deck of the layout and, uh, and it'll go that way. But anyway, that, that gives you, uh, uh just an overview of, of how to design a helix in any rail six. And in this case, how to design a double helix. And so for those of you who may be preparing to put a helix on your double deck layout, uh, I hope that helps you as you try to, to design and plan uh, your layout uh, as you're getting ready to build. Well, those of you who are just learning to use any rail, or maybe you've used the basic functions, but not some of the more advanced ones, I hope that is helpful to you as perhaps you are designing a layout with a double deck or maybe a staging yard underneath. You need a helix to connect the two. It's a great function that will really help you to know exactly how much track that you need. It'll help you to uh, design the, the, the radius and the grade of your layout uh, of your helix. So I hope that's something that'll be very helpful to you. Well, if you enjoyed this video, you're going to want to catch the whole playlist on how to use various functions of AnyRail 6 from the most basic to the most advanced. And you can find all of them in the link in the corner of your screen right now. I want to invite you to take a look at the description down below. And there you're going to find links to my Amazon page, my Amazon pick of the week, my promo code for micromark.com, tons of other great links as well. So I hope you'll take a moment to check that out. Well, if you'd like some more Model Railroad content right now, check out the links on your screen. And be sure and join me each Tuesday as I bring you even more great Model Railroad videos. And I look forward to seeing you then. 10, Lizzie?